the work of God. I really like the word advance. First uh, Timothy chapter one, verse verse three onwards. Okay, verse four, verse three. So that you would instruct certain people not to teach strange doctrines, um, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies which give rise to useless speculation, rather than advance the plan of God, which is by faith. So I urge you now. Beautiful. First, we, not, we must get out of these endless genealogies and myths and useless speculation. You know, in fact, Paul wrote later on that there are people who speculate in theology when they don't even know theology. See, verse 6 says, Some people have strayed from these things. What things? Verse 5, The goal of instruction is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. Some people have strayed from these things, have turned aside to fruitless discussion, wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they do not understand either what they're saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions. You know, some people go ahead and make assertions, you know, they, they sound like they are clever, intellectual, and they, they, they deconstruct the, the verses to suit the agenda. It's really, really dangerous. This is a heresy. Even though they do not understand either what they're saying. They don't understand what they're saying. Um, about which they make confident assertions. So this, this is a big problem. So that comes with speculations and all kind of funky theology. You know, so the strange doctrines. But the opposite of what it does. The antithesis opposite to that useless heretical pursuit is to... Advance the plan of God, which is by faith. Hallelujah. So, Paul is saying that this, this endless trying to come up with really strange doctrines, myths, and endless genealogies, they distract us from advancing the kingdom of God. You know, the plan of God. What is the plan of God? It's go and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. I teach them everything I've taught you, to obey everything I've taught you. That is the plan of God. The plan of God is to renew all things on earth. The plan of God is to, to, to spread the good news. Uh, like Jesus said, the Spirit of God is upon me to share the good news, to, to restore, to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. The world has so many brokenhearted people waiting to be healed. We have the gospel. We have the power to do that. Not our power, but God's power. You see, that's the plan of God. We advance the plan of God. What else? To restore the brokenhearted. To heal. To heal uh, those, those who are sick. And uh, to open the eyes of the blind. Um, to set the captives free. Captives free. So a lot of uh, a lot of them are in uh, in captivity with a self in prison stage, and that has to be set free. And uh, we are prisoners to our sin, to our lustful self. We're prisoner to to the evil desires. So, so God wants to set us free. Jesus came to set us free. That is the message of the gospel. That is to advance the plan of God. But if we get sucked into all this, this strange doctrines and all, strange doctrines and myths and endless genealogies and speculation, we waste so much time. We get sucked in. Instead of we should be really put our put our shoes of the gospel of peace, put our shoes on, go out and spread the good news and make disciples of all nations. You know the the. So there's the advance. Are you advancing the plan of God? That's a, that's a question. Which is by faith. To advance the kingdom of God, the plan of God, we need faith. We, we not only need um, doctrines, understanding. We need both. We need doctrines and we need faith. We can't have one or the other. If you only have faith without doctrinal, knowledge you'll be have faith 
on the basis of heresy or strange doctrines. But if you only have faith, I mean doctrines, solid, good, orthodoxy doctrines, which is awesome. But if you don't have faith, then it, it becomes hot, you know, hot talk, hot air, just talking without that, that strength, that ability to bring it out to the world. So it is really, really important that we understand that. If we don't understand that, you know, do not grasp it. it can, you can argue that if you have the, the doctrine of the Word of God, the orthodox doctrine, uh, deep in your heart, you should be able to expound it. It should affect your life, right? It should, because the regeneration of the Word of God by the Holy Spirit inside you, we automatically begin to regenerate your fallen self, your depravity, de regenerate from corruption, the, the old corruption inside you to something beautiful and new. Hallelujah. So my argument is also, I don't want to create a false dichotomy between faith and, uh, and orthodoxy doctrines. Because if you truly know the Word of God, it's impossible not experiencing regeneration if you meditate upon the Word of God, you see? Psalm chapter 1, blessed are those who meditate upon the Word of God. The more you meditate upon the Word of God, the more you get regenerated. Hello? Hallelujah. Hello? You know, the more you be regenerated, the more you be transformed, the more the Holy Spirit fills within us, the more faith will arise. And this will be so powerful, so beautiful. We seriously need to, need to, they go hand in hand actually, but you, you know, you can't have faith without the Word of God. You can just, you cannot either, you can't just have the Word of God without faith. Because the Word of God produces faith. You know what Jesus said? Faith comes from hearing. Hearing the Word of Christ. Hallelujah. They got to, they got to go together. Real Word produces faith. Real faith comes from real Word. Amen.